This is WBET News, and I'm Tom Rolston reporting. That's the board of the WBET Metro South Weather Center is calling for variable cloudiness of snow showers. Details on the forecast after this hour's top stories. This news is brought to you by the Bridgewater Savings Bank. A Brockton teenager is dead after he apparently shot himself in the chest yesterday morning in a suicide attempt. The 16-year-old male had recently dropped out of the day program at Brockton High School as a result of a long-standing feud involving three other youths. He had subsequently enrolled in the evening diploma course offered by the school department. Brockton police say the teenager shot himself around 6 a.m. yesterday with a 22 caliber rifle. He died later at Cardinal Cushing Hospital. Fire officials in Bourne say a woman was killed in a three-alarm fire that destroyed the old Sagamore Motel on Route 6A in the Sagamore section of the town. The woman's identity was not revealed immediately. She was found inside the one-story wood frame building that was being used as apartments. Officials say firefighters from five towns fought the blaze last night. The cause of the fire not determined immediately. The state fire marshal's office is investigating. Police in North Attleboro say a 22-year-old woman prisoner grabbed a police lieutenant's gun in a cell, fired one shot, that critically injured one officer and wounded another. Police Chief John Coyle said today that the three officers were inside the cell at police headquarters last night trying to restrain the woman identified as Janice Buchanan when the shooting took place. Coyle said she grabbed the gun from the holster of Lieutenant Frank Pepperly and fired one shot which ricocheted off the steel walls and hit Officer Pamela Prue in the face and hand and detected David Dawes on the upper right leg. Both were taken to Sturdy Memorial Hospital in Attleboro. A 22-year-old Ms. Prue was transferred to Rhode Island Hospital in Providence and underwent eye surgery today. Dawes, who was 31, was discharged after treatment at Sturdy Memorial. The Brockton City Council Finance Committee last night gave favorable recommendations to the reappointment of Assessor Frank Bootcut and Brockton Parking Authority Chairman Robert Picardi but table the reappointment of Building Inspector Frank Magliato. The councilors wanted more information. The FinCom also recommended favorably the appropriation of $145,000 for the sale of real estate account for the third, uh, first third payment of a lease purchase agreement for a new fire department ladder truck. The East Bridgewater Board of Selectmen voted unanimously last night to open negotiations with Northern Disposal on possible modifications to the agreement between the town and the company, which governs the company's Thatcher Street landfill. In West Bridgewater, the school committee last night decided to stand firm with its $4.2 million fiscal 1988 budget, despite requests from the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen to reduce the proposed budget increase of 9.3%. In Massachusetts, Governor Michael Dukakis says he's a candidate for the Democratic nomination for president, 53-year-old three-term chief executive ended speculation yesterday by revealing he's forming a campaign committee and will make a formal announcement on May 4th. In sports, it's going to be the Celtics and the Bucks in Milwaukee tonight, the Bruins and the Red Wings in Detroit this evening. The lottery, 2 one two, four, the time, 9 after 9 o'clock. Because of the new tax law enacted by Congress, your ability to deduct interest on car loans, student loans, and other consumer loans will be greatly diminished or eliminated altogether. There is one type of loan, however, that will not be affected by the new government regulations. Home Equity Plus from Bridgewater Savings Bank is a line of credit program secured by the equity in your home. The interest that you pay on your Home Equity Plus loan is tax deductible as long as the amount you borrow doesn't exceed your home's original purchase price plus the cost of any improvements. With Home Equity Plus, you can pay for your children's education, take a long-awaited vacation, make improvements on your home, or use it in any way you like. If you're a qualified homeowner, just stop in at any of the three offices of Bridgewater Savings Bank in Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, or Middleborough for more information. Home Equity Plus will put your home to work for you and provide a tax deduction, too. Bridgewater Savings Bank is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC, DIFM. Here's Nancy at the WBET Metro South Weather Center. Here's the latest WBET weather forecast for the Metro South area. Cloudy skies coming up today. The light snow will be tapering off. It'll be very windy with a high temperature in the mid-30s. The outlook for tonight, partly cloudy skies, diminishing winds just a bit. An overnight low in the 20s. The outlook for tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sun. It will be breezy with a high temperature near 40 degrees. 
for WBET 1460. I'm staff meteorologist Nancy A. Bourne. Currently in Brockton, 27 degrees. This news brought to you by the Bridgewater Savings Bank in Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, and Middleborough. I'm Tom Rolston, WBET News. Next, it's Newsline with Pat Barnes. Now, the South Shore's most popular talk show. This is the WBET 1460 Newsline with Pat Barnes. Your chance to talk to the people making the news. You're just a phone call away at 587-2400. Now, Pat Barnes in the WBET studio. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Good morning. Newsline today will be anything but controversial, unless we goof up on the trivia questions. Jim Larkin is in the studio with me today. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. You too, Pat. Thanks for and inviting well, me on. Thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. Uh, Jim has uh, a lot of his music with him, uh, not not the whole entourage. He has over 20,000, uh, would you call them, records or songs or recordings? Uh, different songs, I guess, yeah. Over 20,000 Irish songs. Actually, I, I shouldn't say they're not 20,000 different. I would say that probably... Some of the same of, by different artists. Yeah, like Danny Boy, you figure at least 80 to 100 people have recorded a song like that. Yeah. So that's still 20,000. That, that's quite a... When people request, do they ask for a particular musician, too, or artist? Mostly not. Mostly they'll they settle for any the version of, of, of the song they like. But you do find that some people will specify, no, they want this version or and that. And you're on WBT every week? Every week, yeah. When is that? That's five to seven Sunday nights. Okay. And that's live, the live. request program. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have open lines today at 587-2400. We've got some Irish trivia, and we do have prizes we're going to give away, compliments of uh, Jim. And uh, look, how do we describe them? Let's, let's take a peek at them. We have an Irish flag and an American flag around a cladder. Is that the cladder that's symbol? The cladder symbol, yeah. And yeah. these are nice. These they are, are nice. Now, yeah. not saying the WBET keychains are of less quality than this, but this is better than those. And they, they are nice looking. We have that. We have... Um, you're not going to be able to pick either. We're going to give you what... Uh, the other is a, it's an Irish cottage scene. That's pretty. It really is pretty. And I know there's another one in there. Yeah, there's two more. Left two more. Line down here. Yes, we have the Irish leprechaun with his red beard. And who's the other one? Oh, the, the shamrock. And once again, what's in the middle there? Is that the clatter? The clatter again? again, yeah. And they're all in a heavy laminated plastic. And a good key ring. They are. Good key ring. Yeah. But you must be successful. People are calling and we haven't even given them a question yet. That's right. So will we take uh, Irish trivia questions? Why not? Because I'll lie and give the answers and we'll defend them even though they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fun day. See if we can get away with it. Five eight seven two four hundred. Jim has the questions. Go ahead. Okay. First question: What is given to nursing mothers in Dublin hospitals? What is given to nursing mothers in, in Dublin, Dublin hospitals? hospitals? What is given to nursing mothers in Dublin hospitals? Uh, it's an easy question. You could even take a guess. I we had it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, you see the answer. Okay. I see it, but I did know it beforehand. I did know it beforehand. Okay. Jim Larkin is in. This is our St. Patrick's Day program on Newsline for WBET 1460. This is a nice, easy day. No controversy today. Of course, unless you want to fight about the answers. And as I said, we'll take your trivia questions, your Irish trivia questions, and we'll depend upon Jim to answer them. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. How about beer? Not close enough. No. <laughs> we'll have to say no on that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Nice try. Good morning. They go, oh, good morning. Uh, lines are open at 587-2400. Repeat the question. Okay, the question is, what is given to nursing mothers in Dublin hospitals? What is given to nursing mothers in Dublin's hospitals? Good morning. Hi. Hi. How about Irish whiskey? No, no not Irish whiskey. No. Okay, I guess I don't night, know. It. Nice, good try. Try. Okay. nice try. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye now. Good morning. Hello. Uh, they must have been there this twice now that uh, people have had similar guesses, I guess, and they, they hear it, they're wrong, and they get off the line. Fear not. Good morning. How about stout? Stout, okay. Stout, Guinness okay. is the answer. Stout Guinness is stout. very good. Stout. Very good. Uh, do you have a question for us? No. You don't. You want your key ring, though. So hold on, okay? Mm -hmm. And Tony will take your name, number. Which is which now? He's got it. 
Hello? All right. That question is done. Okay. The question was, what is given to nursing mothers in Dublin hospitals? The answer, Guinness. And the lady said stout, but she could have, meant, she could have said harp. Mm -hmm. uh, there are the stouts. Yeah. But that's, that's in the a close. spirit of the day, Guinness. I'll take that one. You like Guinness? I do, yeah. Yeah, I'd like I do. It. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. But it, I, I usually have to cut it. Um, and if I could sit down and have one bottle of it. Yeah. After that, it's just too heavy for me. Yeah. Yet I know, you know, overseas, obviously, that's all they do drink. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's draft, and it's uh, cool, not cold. So that's something I could drink every night of the week, oh. believe me. <laughs> Once a week, maybe I could handle Good morning. It. Morning. I got a question or uh, comment regarding politics, okay? My suggestion is when a person is elected to a government position, such as a governor or a senator or a congressman or whatever, and then decides to run for another office, I believe that he cannot effectively perform the duties in the office to which he was elected if he's running for another office. And therefore, I think there should be a law that the guy should resign from the town office he's now holding and then devote his time to running for the new office. I think it's entirely unfair to the people who elected him to serve in a certain capacity. And then Have you been listening to the program this morning? Not really. Oh. Why? Because we're doing a St. Patrick's Day program. We're doing Irish trivia. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, anyway, that's my comment. <laughs> well, call back tomorrow and do it again. I will do indeed. All right, take care. You should listen before you speak. Good morning, hi. Oh, mothers were given babies. Mothers were given babies? Yeah. In the hospital. We got the answer. We have the answer. They <laughs> were, they're, they're given Guinness Stout. Oh, oh yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. We'll take a message and come right back. The finest sea seafood on Boston South Shore. That's what they've got. And you get a lot of McManamy's fish shanty. Hi, I'm Lou McManamy. You do get a lot of McManamy's fish shanty. It's Brockton's only real, complete seafood restaurant with over 50 great seafood platters. Serving lunch and a dinner special as well as mini meals. Open Tuesday through Sunday, located at 105 Pleasant Street, Route 27 of Brockton. Hey, have you tried our newest location at Route 28 in West Bridgewater? Featuring the finest in deep fried seafood, lobster rolls, fried clams, onion rings, hey, you name it. So visit the fish shanty and the fish market in Brockton. Our new West Bridgewater store, King Center Falmouth. So remember, the fish you eat today swam last night in Buzzard Bay. The finest in seafood on Boston South Shore. That's what they've got. If you want to choose from thousands of great movies and the finest video equipment, visit your video store first and foremost in the city of Brockton with a fantastic selection of movie titles, your video store at 675 Warren Avenue offers a full line of accessories and equipment, plus an introduction to laser disc rentals. What makes your video store unique? It's the people. This Joni Degrassi, the Pied Pepper of Video. Jack Croce of the Easton Store at 490 Foundry Street, known as the Movie Buff. Jim and Jack, the Daily Twins, plus Bob Reno. All provide the personal touch. Your video store offers a lifetime membership for just $25, and the first five rentals are free. They also provide professional in-store one-day cleaning of your VCR for just $19.95. For one of the largest selections of tapes and a knowledgeable, helpful staff to help you choose, it's your video store at 675 Warren Avenue in Brockton. They also have handicap facilities. Your video store, a brand new look with a personal touch. WCAV, WBET have ringside seats for the Destiny at Caesars. The super fight between Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard, April 6th in Las Vegas. One lucky listener will win these ringside seats plus round-trip air transportation from Boston to Las Vegas, leaving Boston on April 3rd and returning on April 7th. Four nights accommodations at the Valley Las Vegas Hotel and the limousine ride to Logan Airport. To be eligible to win, you must listen. 
Beginning this Wednesday, listen to Rock the Day for the four boxers' names of each day. At the end of the day, when you have the four names, write them down on the postcard along with the day's date, your name, address, and telephone number. Listen each weekday through March 27th and send the postcard each day. Enter as many times as you'd like. There will be four different boxes' names each day. Send your postcards to Superfight, WCAV, WBET, Post Office Box 787, Brockton, Massachusetts, 02403. Listening every day increases your chances to win this fabulous trip, including ringside seats at the Super Fight of the Decade from 98 Country WCAV and WBET AM 1460. Welcome back to Newsline on WBET 1460. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Jim Larkin is in with me. Uh, we're doing an Irish trivia show today. We've got some music that we'll be playing, and uh, like I said, we have uh, some keychains. They are special and they're nice that we're giving away for correct answers, so I hope you're enjoying our trivia day, St. Patty's Day. Nice, easy day, no controversies. Uh, Jim, you have another one. Yeah, and you don't have to be Irish to answer a lot of these questions. Some of these questions are ones that anybody would know. Well, everybody's Irish. Too. And here's the next question. Three U.S. presidents visited Ireland while in office. Who were they? And you must name all three. Three Irish presidents. Three U.S. presidents. Oh. Visited Ireland. I thought three of them came here, but I guess not, huh? Three U.S. presidents. Right. They visited, visited Ireland, Ireland while they were in office. While in office. Our number is 587-2400. While we're waiting for somebody to call in, you have some record selections here. How about we do an old-fashioned Rebel song? Where sure. We'll tell Tony which one to cue up. Sure. Which would be a good one. Is he listening? Tony, are you listening? Yes, he's listening. You're listening, Tony. You have an animal goldsmith record there in front of you, right? He's on the phone right now. Okay. So we'll give him a second. You have a record. Can you hear us? Okay. You have a record in front of you. Anima Goldrick. Anima Gro Goldrick. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Hi. Was it Reagan, Kennedy, and Roosevelt? No. no. Very nice try. Nice. You did as well as I did, but you don't get the keychain. You've got one more. Nice try. Five eight seven two four hundred. Repeat the question, Jim. Okay. Three U.S. presidents visited Ireland while in office. Name the three of them. Three U.S. presidents visited Ireland while in office. Name three. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Would it be President Reagan, President Nixon, or President Kennedy? That's right. That's correct. You got it. Congratulations. Very good. How'd you know? Jim. How'd you know it? I know Jim Larkin very well. Who's and this? I'm up on Irish history. Who's this? Um, JFK. JF. Oh my God. <laughs> can okay. You, can you hold on? Okay. Right. Tony will get your name. Hello. They they left. They left. So there's there's two out of the way. You were going to break those down. See, they 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 did get them. She didn't have an inside track on that. <laughs> I know Jim well. Five eight seven two four hundred. It's Irish trivia today on St. Patrick's Day. A happy St. Patrick's Day. Newsline is non-controversial today. A little bit of music, a little bit of Irish trivia, and just relax and enjoy. Now, do you know what song you want queued up? How about James Conley? You see that on there? While he's queuing, we'll try another. Okay. Whose picture is on the Irish twenty-pound note? Oh. Whose picture is on the Irish twenty-pound note? I'll take a guess at it once we get into our record. You want to put it on? A great crowd had gathered Outside of Kilmeny T'was the voice Welcome back to Newsline on WBT 1460. Who was that artist? That was Anna McGoldrick, and the song was uh, James Conley. And your trivia question right now, Jim. Okay, whose picture is on the Irish 20-pound note? Good morning. They went away. Good morning. Uh, uh, about that picture on the 20-pound note? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Emon de Valera? 
No. Eamon de Valera. No. It's not him. That no, was no. my guess, and I was wrong. Not the 20 power Yeah, note. by the way, Pat. Yes. While I'm on the line, I remember listening to an Irish ditty uh, many years ago at a St. Patrick's Day party. Yeah, what was her name? Uh, <laughs> no, just short, a little short poem like. <laughs> yes. I, I repeat it. You want to hear it? If it's clean. It's clean. No four letter words. Okay? All right. Oh, the Dutchmen were made to carry cold shovel snow. Italians for organs, the Englishmen for hash. Chinese for washing, Japs for juggling shows, Blacks for basketball, and the Jews were made for cash. Cubans for cigarettes, the Portuguese for sailing seas, Russians for mining, and the French were made for style. Scotchmen for bakery, America for liberty, but men are made bosses who come from Erin's Isle. Hippa hippa rah, Erin go brah, there's nothing too good for the Irish. Well, I better hang up, Pat, because I'm an Italian. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour, no. Quite a song for an Italian. Or yeah, boy, oh boy, that was, uh, <clears throat> you really bailed that one out. That was about one of the most racist things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, hi. Was it King George of England? No, it no. wasn't King George of England. No. On Good the time. Irish 20 pound note, that would be, uh, well, they were under English rule. They still are, some of them. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, hi. Yes, was it Charles Stewart Parnell? No, sir, it wasn't. Oh, my goodness. All no. right, thank you. Nice thank guess. You. Yeah. I know. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Okay. Is that Jack Kennedy? No, it no. wasn't Jack. Has he ever been put on Irish money? Not that I know of. No, this is, who's on, whose picture is on the Irish 20-pound note? note? Thank you, sir. Five eight seven two four hundred is the news line number. We have uh, a trivia day today, Irish trivia. Uh, Jim Larkin is here. He's brought some of his music. We have uh, keychains that are being uh, awarded to those who uh, answer the trivia questions correctly, and they have to be right on the money. Number five eight seven two four hundred. The question that is outstanding: Whose picture is on the Irish twenty-pound note? Good morning. You want to be on Newsline? Yeah. Okay. Oh, if it's Northern Ireland, it would, be, it would be Queen Elizabeth. No, it's not Northern Ireland. Oh, it's all part of Ireland. That's a strong, uh, funny way to put a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks for trying. It's getting sticky there for... Good morning. Hi. Hello. All right, lines are open at 587-2400. Uh, we have a trivia question. I think people are stumped on this, so we'll, we'll leave it there. Why don't you throw another one out? Okay, this one will be for the sports fans. The first Major League All-Star game played in 1933 was an Irish manager's battle. Who are the managers of the teams? And we want uh, both the American and the National League managers' names. I'll repeat it once more. The first Major League All-Star game played in 1933 was an Irish manager's battle. Name the two managers. Good morning. That isn't the one I wanted to talk. How about George Benesh Shaw? No. Nice try. Oh, no, sorry. You're getting closer, though. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Well, Hello. Yeah, will that be James Joyce? No. No. Nice no. try. No. Nice try. See you later. Lines are open. There's two questions outstanding now. Getting closer all the time. Two questions outstanding. You have a whole book here of Irish trivia. That's a, that's a nice book. It is. It is. Difficult. You got to work to find the answers, though. In this, oh one. yeah, yeah. And believe me, there's talk about difficult ones. You could lose a lot of people in this. Actually, even if somebody knew um, the the book that some of the questions were from, they would still have a hard time it. finding still the answer. Right. Good morning. Hi. Uh, the baseball uh, managers Connie uh, Connie Mack and John McGrath. No, you have one of them. I have Connie Mack. You have the other one. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Connie Mack was right, but the other one wasn't. Okay. Thanks nice for trying. Try. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Is it St. Patrick on the 20-pound note? No, no, ma'am. No. No. It's not my picture either. Nice try. One line open at 587-2400. This is Irish Trivia Day on Newsline. They want to come through? Or they, they're all trying their answers out on Tony. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's trying. They're soliciting his help. Good morning. Hi. Yates. Yates is right. Yates's picture is on the twenty-pound note. Very How great. did you know that? Hello. My mother told me. Your mother told you. How did your mother know? She's Irish. Oh. Okay. That's good. Now you're gonna hold on the line. We'll get the keychain for you. All right. Okay. Hold on. Good morning. And a baseball question. How about Connie Mack and I think it was George Higgins? No. Oh. No. Thanks for trying. One line open. Read it again. I think that's a... The first Major League All-Star game played in 1933 was an Irish manager's battle. Who were the two managers, the American and the National League? Good morning. Hi. It was John McGraw and Connie Mack. Okay, that's right. Muggsy McGraw and Connie Mack. Very good. Very good. Can I ask you one? Sure. What states have the highest and lowest percentage of people claiming Irish heritage? How many states do you want? By percentage? One that claims the highest and the one that claims the lowest. By percentage of the population? Hmm. Uh, I'll say Massachusetts for the highest that's percentage. Right. And the lowest, I would say... Uh, Ooh, that's a, that's a difficult question. It's a very difficult question. How about New Mexico? Yeah. No. And what is it? It's Alaska, 0.1%. Oh. And what's what's Massachusetts? A 45. And that's the highest? Yes. What's number two? That was all they had. That's all they had? I think New York is number two. Well, you hold on. You get the keychain. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Interesting. Hello? Oh, is that is it Dean Swift? Is it on the 20 pound note? No. Uh, the answer was Yates. Yates? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice try. Okay, no problem. Bye. Bye. I detect an accent there. Hmm. Sneaking it in. We have. I guess you got to start a new. Okay. Whose autobiography was called The Wind at My Back? Whose autobiography was called The Wind at My Back? This is an Irish American answer. No? Uh yeah. Yeah, that's a question a lot of Irish Americans would know. Uh, this one. Any hints? Yeah, we'll let it go at that. Yeah. Leave it at that. We'll be back following this message. And now it's time for another play by play from Burger King. It's game time, and Janet is taking her turn in the carpool. She's got her little Nick and Josh. She's picking up Wild William. Uh-oh, cut it out, William, no hitting. Okay, they're coming up to the school now, and the kids get out and take off at Mach 1. They never look back, but Janet waves anyhow and heads for work. But wait, she's making her move for breakfast to go at Burger King. She's into the drive-thru for some of those crispy little French toast sticks and switch. She dips one into the syrup. She's smacking her lips. She really likes it. She's using her fingers and swish. She scores another French toast stick. Look at her eating them. There goes the clock. And she's moving out of the drive-thru and on the way to work. Way to go, Janet. Breakfast to go at Burger King. The best food for fast times. Beautiful looks, beautiful prices. The tradition lives on with fine furniture by Clayton Marcus, now at Fly's Designer Showrooms in Whitman. Fly's is now a Clayton Marcus gallery dealer. For years, people have selected Clayton Marcus furniture because of its elegant styling, handcrafted construction, and beautiful prices. Start the Clayton Marcus tradition in your home with chairs from $3.99, love seats from $5.49, and sofas from $5.99, and choose from more than 800 fabrics. This fine collection is waiting at Fly's Designer Showrooms 242 Bedford Street, Route 18 in Whitman. Welcome back to our St. Patrick's Day show here on Newsline. Jim Larkin is with me. He's got the trivia questions, Irish trivia. We've got some of Jim's music here. Good morning. Hi. Hello, Pat. Hello. Pat. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Uh, will you please play that song that woman sang a while ago? I never heard such a beautiful voice. You're talking about Anna McGoldrick and James Conley? That's what you heard? Yeah. You like that? Oh, it was beautiful. Beautiful. I wish you'd play it again. Well, I don't know about the same one. How about something else by by the same... It was, it was a woman. Yes. Yeah, it was Anna McGoldrick. Yeah. 
Yeah. Couldn't play. You haven't got that record at all. Yeah, we we just played it. I know, but can't you play it again? Maybe we'll play a different song by her. How's that? All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Did you get an answer for your last question yet? Not yet. Uh, was it Pat O'Brien? Yes, it was. That's Pat right. O'Brien. Very Read, good. Read the question again. The question was whose autobiography was called The Wind at My Back. Dick Benham said it was Albert Schweitzer, but we know he was wrong. Pat O'Brien is the answer. Well, thank you. Incidentally, I saw Anna McGoldrick at the high school two years ago. She was great. Did you you liked her, huh? Yes. Uh, Jim Are was saying that she had a standing ovation when, when she, she dan sang, sang James, James Conley. Yeah. Hey, right. She brought yeah. the house down with that song. Are you going to the show at the high school Saturday night? Yes, I am. You are. Very good. Thank you. Hold on. Oh, well, getting down on the questions. Okay. What U.S. president had parents from Carrickfergus County Antrim? What U.S. president had parents from Carrickfergus County Antrim? Hmm. That's a that's a that's a trick question. That's yeah, a, it's, it's, it's a not, good one. I like not it. as easy as the other. I like it. That's a good question. Maybe I'll throw out an easy one with it. What's the most common surname in Ireland? What's the most common surname? In Ireland. Right. See, I can't guess out loud because then it will go over the air. Yeah. And I don't want to yeah. give the... Uh, so don't let me see the answer. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. 587-2400 is our number if you'd like to get through on our Irish trivia line this morning. You're more than welcome to. Perhaps we could put another piece of music up while the folks are thinking of the answers. Shall we do uh, another song from that album? Sure, why not? Uh, Dale, see if you can find a song on there, Dan's Little Rose. That's one that a lot of folks call and request from time to time. As soon as he gets, he's got, he's got uh, a lot of duties to take care of in there. Good morning, hi. How much do I want the, the most common surname? That's right. Uh, I'm going to say O'Reilly. No, sir. Very good guess, though. All right, thank you. It's a very common one, but... Right. Okay. Good morning. Hi. Is the common surname Patrick? No. Okay, thank no. you. No. We're looking for the surname. You're looking for a last name. Then. Right, that's yeah. right. St. Patrick's Day, and welcome back to Newsline. Jim Larkin is in here with me. We're doing uh, Irish trivia. You have a question out, don't you? There are two questions out. One of them is, what U.S. president had parents from Carrickfergus County Antrim? And the second question is, what is the most common surname in Ireland? Good morning. Uh, most common surname in Ireland? Right. O'Connor? No, no, sir. Oh, nice try. Nice. All right, thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Would the most common surname in Ireland be Conley? No, it wouldn't no. be Conley. Nice try. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Got a screamer in the back. Yeah, a lot of there. common names they're giving, too. Sure. And, uh, Hello. Hi, Pam. Is the name Mills? No, no. not Mills. Oh, nice no. try. 587-2400. Good morning. Hi. Is the surname by any chance O'Brien? No, no, no. no. Okay. Good try. Thanks. Yeah, bye bye. Great guesses. Yes. Great guesses. What's the most common surname? Pat Bonds, by the way, gave up. Yes, he I guess I was wrong. Names. He gave up. I was wrong. Good morning. Good morning. Might the surname be O'Brien? No, it was nope. just guessed. You oh, want to try? Thank you very much. Okay. Yep. Hello? Hello, I think it's Hogan. No, nope, nope, nice try. <laughs> Thank you. Happy yeah. St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> you too. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Good morning. Does that name be Sullivan? No. no. Oh, Not a good one, though. Very good. Let me tell you something offhand. You know, okay. in San Francisco, there's 186 pages in the telephone directory of the name Wong. Oh, my God. Really? W-O-N-G. And chances are, if you, if you are in San Francisco like Pat has been, Mm-hmm. Very often you could get a wrong number. 
Oh, happy St. Paddy's Day, Happy St. Paddy's Day, guys. Saint Patty's Day. Get a wong number. Good morning, hi. Would that name be Murphy? That yes. name is Murphy. Right. Oh, there we go. hallelujah. Did you just guess at it? Well, I guessed that, yeah, sure. I, I stand here and listen to all the names. And you're trying to figure out which is which. Right. Uh, Jim was saying Pat Murphy is probably the most common name. Murphy. Uh -huh. Pat Murphy. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, hold on. Hang on the line, we'll give you an Irish Are you descent. Irish, of Irish descent? I come from Belfast. Mm-hmm. Oh, very good. Right. Hold on. Okay. Good morning. Did you get that surname yet? Yes, yes we, we did. did. Was it Harrigan? No, it was I Murphy. I made a song, okay. It's Mur Murphy. Thanks. Thanks. The reason I'm joking on the Murphy is uh, there's a friend of mine who um, was Miss someone thought he was someone by the name of Murphy and it was a Greek fellow who was pronounced in the Morphy Mr. Oh, Morphy I see it's a great great pronunciation Murphy Morphy <laughs> <laughs> Five eight seven two four hundred. still have one out yeah I was still looking for the name of the US president that had parents from Carrick Fergus County Antrim that's a tough question mm. a tough let's throw out question. another easy one too who's the female patron patron saint of Ireland the female patron saint of Ireland. Good morning. The president say uh, it wouldn't be Kennedy, would it? No, it wouldn't be Kennedy. Oh, thank you. Okay, nice thanks for try. trying. Nice try. What was the other question? Who is the female patron saint of Ireland? I already looked. Good morning. I'm going to take a guess on the president. I'm oh. not even sure if he was Irish or not. How about Garfield? No, it wasn't Garfield. Oh. Nope. All right, thanks. Good try. Yep, nice try. I was right on that. I looked, but I was right on the patron saint. Oh, okay. Good morning. How about President Reagan? No. Nope. Oh, okay, then, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now, this president's both parents were from Carrick, Fergus, County Antrim. Good morning, good morning. Yes, uh, the female saint of Ireland. Right. Is that Bridget? Yes, it is. Very good, St. Bridget. Right. Would you like an Irish keychain? Oh, I'd love one. Okay, hold on the line, and Tony will uh, take your name and address. Thank you very much. Happy okay, St. Patrick's Day. You too. Happy St. Thanks. Patrick's Day. I knew it was St. Bridget. I did. I knew, and then I looked and checked, and I was right. Good morning. Good morning. I was going to say St. Bridget, too. I was on the line. <laughs> well, almost fast enough, but not quite. Okay. Uh, are you of Irish descent? Yes, I am, and I'm a, I was a McCarthy. And where are your people from? County Cork. County Cork. You want to take a guess I've at the president? I've been over six times. You've been over six times? Right. Would you Good like to you. take a guess at the president? Whose parents I were from really, Well, Anthem? I was going to say Thomas Jefferson, but I, I wasn't no, sure no, about it. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. right. Thank you. She's getting back in history, though. Uh, a little little hint there. Yeah. Getting back in history. Good morning. Hi. Uh, yeah, I want to take a guess at the president, but that woman just called up her said her, said her last name was McCarthy? Yes. Hey, nobody mentioned that name when they were thinking of the surnames. That's a very common name. McCarthy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but the president, I'm going to take a guess at William McKinley. Wrong. No. Oh, oh well. Thank you anyway. Nice okay. try. We'll be right back. The 1987 tour of Olympic and world figure skating champions is coming to Boston. Don't miss this one-time-only ice extravaganza. Starring Debbie Thomas, America's first black champion. Brian Orser, Canada's silver medalist. Tiffany Chin, the two-time bronze medalist, and many more of the world's hottest figure skating champions. Don't miss this year's tour of Olympic and world figure skating champions appearing at Boston Garden Saturday, March 21st. For ticket charge, call 742-0200. That's 742-0200. Call today. You want a car? Then you want a Honda from Silco Honda in Brockton. And if you want one right now, Silco has them. Plenty of Hondas in all models. You don't have to wait. And Silco Honda will save you money. They sell cars at unbeatable Honda prices. Mention WBET and ask about a free vacation to Florida. Silco is the largest exclusive Honda dealer in the Metro South area. Winner of the Honda Quality Dealer Award for two consecutive years. And now you know why. Call them today, 587 2200 Silco Honda, Route 28, Brockton. Silco Honda will not be undersold. Oh, we're back again. Here I am looking at the Irish trivia book. Good morning. Hi. Hey, was that Reagan? No, it wasn't Reagan. That was already guessed. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks for trying. Good morning. Yeah, was that Woodrow Wilson? No, it wasn't no. Woodrow Wilson. 
No. Thanks for trying. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye now. One by one, we're narrowing them narrowing down. Narrowing it down. 587-2400. Do you have a male vocalist that we could uh, listen to or perhaps another uh, work? Yeah, maybe we could listen to uh, Brendan Shine. All right, I'll hand it over to them. Uh, it's a, what uh, song would you like? It's called The Village Where I Went to School. It's a uh, very popular song. We get a lot of requests to play it on uh, Sounds of the Emerald Isle on Sunday nights. So, Tony, if you'd be good enough to put on that side for us. It's a Brendan Shine, male vocalist from Ireland, one of the more popular vocalists from Ireland. He's queuing that up. We and we're looking for the name of the U.S. president that had parents from Carrick, Fergus, County Antrim, and Ireland. Good morning. Morning. Was that Adams? No, it wasn't Adams. It wasn't Adams. No. no. Good guess. No, thanks for hey. trying. 587 to 400. Keep on trying. There were only what? How many presidents? Bound yeah, we've, we've gone through <laughs> probably half already. Good morning. Yes, would you have the record Galway Bay? Galway uh, Bay. We oh, may. Bay. Well, I, I, would you play it for me, please? We'll see what we can do. Thank okay. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Yes. You have an answer for us, sir. <laughs> Turn your radio down. You have an answer for us, sir. Jackson. Andrew That's Jackson. Correct. That's right. Very How good. How did you know it? Huh? How did you know it? A uh, little bit of history I remembered as a kid. No kidding. Are you of Irish descent? Yes. Where are your people from? I'm the West. Mayo and Roscommon. Very good. Well, Congratulations. Hold on, sir, because you win the keychain. All right. Larkin is in here in the Newsline studio this morning, and he's brought along a few of the 20,000 in his collection of Irish songs, Irish music. We're doing trivia this morning, Irish trivia. Somebody got our tough question, your yeah. tough question. Yeah. Good morning. Somebody there? Hi, Pat. Hey, I, I demand a recount on that manager of the two Irish managers. I did say John McGrath and Connie Matt. And then later on, someone said, Muggsy McGrath, he says, you're right. I happen to have a picture of the... Uh, all-star team. I was just reading it in my column. It shows that uh, all the players are the Jimmy Fox, Luke, Eric, uh, uh, Charlie Gavage. I can name almost name the, the team in both. But I did say John McGraw with Connie Mack. Actually, Connie Mack's real name was Cornelius McGillicuddy, and he's from Brookfield, Mass. Okay, well, didn't, didn't you give us the name McGrath? That's how you pronounce it. That's the way you, It's not the Irish way to pronounce it. I know that. I said, that's the way it was, uh, I said, John McGrath. No, there's a McGraw, and there's McGraw, a McGrath. Yeah, McGraw. But yeah, they, they, they spell it M-C-G-R-A-T-H. No, it's M-C-G-R-A-W. That was, that was going to be the Irish spelling. <laughs> they just chop it down earlier. He was the manager of the New York Giants, and uh, Carly Mapp was manager of the Philadelphia Athletics. The pitcher and signing pitchers were Hubble and uh, Lefty Grove. Well, I'll tell you what, anybody will fight that hard for a key change uh, Yeah, I was just going to say, let's give him one. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> 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 okay. Hold on. Give him a key change. <laughs> okay. You want. Yeah, I'd like a couple of things I'd like to mention. Um, this Sunday, Island's Zone of Brockton is sponsoring a running of the green. It's a five-mile road race. It starts at 10 a.m., and the start and finish line will be Main and Elm Street in downtown Brockton. There will be trophies to winners, T-shirts to the first 200 entries, and there's five divisions. The fee is $6, or $8 the day of the race, I should say, and that will start at City Hall Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. And they also have an Irish concert coming to Brockton High School Saturday night. It's the All-Star Patty Noonan Show, which comes every year. And this year, Carmel Quinn will be coming, Patty Noonan, John Scott Trotter, Johnny Hanley, Irish storyteller, comedian Chris Curran, and Tony Kenny, Jury's Cabaret star. We have a song by Tony, as a matter of fact. Uh, and it was a request. A request from the, of Galway Bay. Hello. 
morning. I've got a question for you. Okay. What famous Irish actor always, always wears nothing but emerald green socks? Irish, mm. Irish actor? actor. Mm-hmm. Not Irish-American, but Irish. Irish. Green socks. You got me. You got me, too. Peter, Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. Oh. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. You stumped us. And now we'll have uh, Galway Bay. Yeah, this is Tony Kenny. If you ever go across the sea to Ireland, then maybe at the closing of your day, in that dear land across the Irish Sea. Listening to WBET 1460 Brockton, the only full service AM news and information source in the Metro South area. It is now 10 o'clock. Good morning. This is WBET News. I'm Dick Benham reporting. Nancy Aborn of the WBET Metro South Weather Center is calling for snow, tapering off in windy weather today. Details on that forecast coming up. A Brockton teenager is dead after he apparently shot himself in the chest yesterday morning in a suicide attempt. The 16-year-old male had recently dropped off the day program at Brockton High School as a result of a long-standing feud involving three other youths. He had subsequently enrolled in the evening diploma course offered by the school department. Brockton police said the teenager shot himself about 6 a.m. yesterday with a 22 caliber. Fellow police headquarters last night tried to restrain the woman identified as Janice Buchanan when the shooting took place. They say she grabbed the gun from the holster. Lieutenant Frank Pefferly fired one shot, but ricocheted off the steel walls and hit Officer Pamela Pru in the face and hand, and Detective David Dawes in the upper right leg. Both were taken to Sturdy Hospital in Attleboro. The 22-year-old Pru was transferred to Rhode Island Hospital and underwent eye surgery. Dawes, 31, was discharged after treatment. Fire officials in Bourne say a woman was killed in a three-alarm fire that destroyed the old Sagamore Hotel on Route 6A in the Sagamore section of the town. The woman's identity was not revealed immediately. She was found inside the one-story frame building that was being used as apartments. Officials said firefighters from five towns fought the blaze last night. The cause of the fire not immediately determined. The fire marshal's office is investigating. To not many people surprise, Governor Michael Dukakis said he's a candidate for the Democratic nomination for president. The 53-year-old three-term chief executive ended speculation yesterday by revealing he's forming a campaign committee and will make a formal announcement May 4th. He told legislators and supporters at the State House that with their help and prayers, the son of a Greek immigrant named Mike Dukakis can be the next president. The governor said he wants to bring the nation a message of economic opportunity for all and pursue the cause of world peace. Boston police are investigating the shooting death of a young man whose body was discovered after it was apparently struck by a car. Police say the name of the 26-year-old victim was being withheld. He said a motorist thought he hit a pedestrian near Upham's Corner in Dorchester last night. The fatal gunshot wounds were discovered when the victim arrived at Boston City Hospital. The name it wasn't released of the motorist either. He was upset and couldn't understand what was going on. Police said they're looking for several suspects in the shooting. Business was booming for the housing industry last month. The Commerce Department reports housing construction rose more than 2.5% in February to the highest level in 10 months. For the first time since Syrian peacekeeping forces arrived in Beirut last month, a car bomb has exploded. Police say the explosion in Muslim West Beirut wounded one person. The government's long-awaited AIDS education plan is out. It recommends abstinence, monogamy, and condoms as ways to prevent the disease. In sports, the Boston Red Sox and agents for Roger Clemens are trying to work out a contract agreement that would bring the American League MVP and Cy Young Award winner back to training camp. Sox general manager Lou Gorman said the team has upped its incentive offer that could bring the Clemens contract up to $950,000 for 1987. The Boston Celtics meet the Bucks in Milwaukee tonight. Red Sox split, 
their squad and their games yesterday. One unit defeated the Yankees 6-4. The other lost to Philadelphia 9-8. They're split again today. One playing Cincinnati and Tampa. The other Detroit tonight in Lakeland. The Bruins meet the Red Wings in Detroit in National Hockey League action tonight. You'll hear the game at 7.09 p.m. on WBET. And B.C. beat Maine 4-2 to win the Hockey East title. Let's check now with Nancy Aborn at the WBET Metro South Weather Center. Here's the latest WBET weather forecast for the Metro South area as a stubborn low pressure system packs its bags and moves out to sea. Unfortunately, we don't have such a hot day coming up, but the rest of the week looks pretty good. For the St. Patrick's Day, look for cloudy skies. The light snow will be tapering off. Nothing too significant as far as accumulation. It will be windy, though. A daytime high temperature in the mid to upper 30s. Partly cloudy skies tonight. The winds will diminish just a touch. An overnight low in the upper 20s. The outlook for tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sun. It'll be breezy, 35 to 40 degrees. For WBET 1460, I'm staff meteorologist Nancy Aborn. Thank you, Nancy. Currently in Brockton, it's down to 26 degrees. I'm Dick Benham, WBET News. Now back to Newsline and Patty Barnes. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Happy St. Patty's Day. And happy St. Patty's Day to all of you listening. Jim Larkin is in the studio with us today. Uh, Newsline today is a non-controversial program. We're doing Irish trivia, and we're listening to some of the fine music that uh, Jim brought with him and actually loaned a good bit to both this station and our sister station, WCAV, so that we would have a lot of good Irish music for you to listen to uh, on this St. Patrick's Day, 1987. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. I was wondering if Mr. Larkin could answer some questions. Is there a concert this weekend? Yeah, there's a concert at Brockton High School on Saturday night. And yeah. who will be there? Uh, Patty Noonan. It's the old Patty Noonan concert. It, it features Carmel Quinn, uh, Tony Kenny, Andy Cooney, John Scott Trotter, Johnny Hanley, comedian Chris Curran, and Jury's cabaret star Tony Kenny. Okay, and can you get tickets at the door? Um, I, I can't say yes because if it it's sold, sold out, out, you know... You, uh, your best bet, uh, I could give you two telephone numbers you could call. Please. They it's, usually sell out. Uh, yeah, 586-3915 you could call, or 586-0681, one of those two numbers. All right. Call. Uh, did also, could you tell me if you brought Noel Henry's uh, rosary song? Noel Henry. Oh, the Lady of Knock, no. Yeah. I, no. Uh, no. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's, it is, yeah. All Sorry. right. Do you play it Sunday? Thank you. I will play it Sunday, okay. sure. Thank you. Okay. All right. If he recovers from today, uh, he's got quite the schedule. Yeah. yeah. You're playing up in Beverly tonight? Up in Beverly tonight. Playing at a lunch in Boston. Spinnaker Pub and more, right on the water. We'll be there from 6 until uh, 1 until o'clock they shut in the, the morning thing or down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Let's put, out a, let's put out a trivia question and we'll listen to a little Irish humor. Okay. Uh, name the stunning pop music singer from Ireland best known for singing the title track from the James Bond movie, For Your Eyes Only. But Name the again. stunning pop music singer from Ireland, best known for singing the title track from the James Bond movie, For Your Eyes Only. And now we have a little bit of Irish humor. You know, Irish humor is so beautifully unpretentious that people love it all over the world for that very reason. Ireland was always conscious of the need to laugh. Laughter sustains us through all adversity. We Irish have the rich asset of being able to enjoy humor about ourselves and about our lovely country, and that is why we're going to live forever. Forever. Casey came home from seeing the doctor looking very worried. His wife said, what's the problem? He said, the doctor told me I have to take a pill every day for the rest of my life. She said, so what? Lots of people have to take a pill every day for the rest of their lives. She said, I know, but he only gave me four. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> You're lovely people, you really are. We Irish have a middle name. It is called evasiveness and we use it very often. Particularly when we do something wrong. We're slow to admit that we've done something wrong. So what happens? We become evasive. Here's an example. Casey loaned his new car to Flanagan to go to the dance, and Flanagan came home at four o'clock in the morning, and Casey said, how did it go? And Flanagan said, it made a great night. But he said, I'm sorry to tell you, I got some water in the carburetor. And Casey said, where's the car? He said, in the river. <laughs> Casey and Flanagan 
William were trying to get this mule into the barn, but his ears were too long. And Casey said, it's no good, he said. We'd have to raise the roof of the barn. And Flanagan said, no, he said, I think we should dig a trench in the floor. And Casey said, don't be ridiculous, he said. It's his ears that are too long, not his feet. <laughs> oh, write it down, write it down. Well, I tell you, well, I tell you, I said, the pubs closed in Ireland at 11 o'clock at night. But we managed, now listen, let me tell you, up and done, let me paint a little picture for you, up in Donegal, this lovely part of Ireland, it is 30 minutes past the closing time, 11.30, and some of the lads are still in the pub having a little drink. Father Murphy saw them as he went by, and he didn't like it. He was very annoyed. He walked in, he looked at them and said, look at this, this is all we seem to think about. The demon drink has got to us. He said, for God's sake, we must uplift ourselves and turn our backs on the evils of alcohol. He said to Flynn, who was sitting at the bar, he said, Flynn, do you want to go to heaven? Flynn said, God knows I do, Father. I do, I do. The priest said, right, stand over there. He said to Hennessy, and what about you, Hennessy? Do you want to go to heaven? He said, I do that, Father. I do, I do, I do. The priest said, right, stand over there. Murphy is sitting at the bar with a pint of Guinness in each hand. That's his idea of a balanced diet. <laughs> And the priest said to him, do you want to go to heaven? He said, no, not me, Father. No, I don't. No, no. And the priest said, do you mean to stand there and tell me that when you die, you don't want to go to heaven? Oh, he said, when I die, yes. I thought you were going now. <laughs> Welcome back to Newsline, the St. Patrick's Day edition. My name is Pat Barnes. Jim Larkin is with us on Newsline this morning. That was Hal Roach. Hal Roach, yeah. Hal Roach. What a funny guy. Right that down. Good morning. They went away. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I thought I had a warm number here. Uh, would that be Sheena Easton? Yes, it would be Sheena Easton. Very I good. She was from Australia. No, she's from Ireland. Oh, she's from Ireland. That's yes. right. Yep. She is terrific. Yeah, very good. Tiny little thing. Very good. Yes. Did you win a keychain <laughs> before? Uh, never had a keychain in my life, so I, I, I'd like an Irish one. All yeah. right. Okay, hang on Hold the line. Hold on. He's lying through his teeth. 587-2400 is the news lineup. We go back to trivia. Okay, what happened in Ireland on March 7th, 1966 that made news almost all over the world? What happened in Ireland on March 7th, 1966 that made news almost all over the world? March 7th, 1966 that made news almost all over the world got me. Maybe I'll throw another one out at the mm. same time. John Holland of Liscannor County Clare invented this. What was it? John Holland of Liscannor County Clare invented this. What was it? Was that what we were talking about earlier? No. No. Okay. No. Hello? Yeah, well, on that question, what happened in 1966, could that be the election of a Jewish mayor in Dublin? No, that was well before 66. Okay. Good try. Nice try. Yeah, bye. Right. Five eight seven two four hundred. We have Irish trivia this morning. Compliments of Jim Larkin. Well, why don't you read them again? Okay. What happened in Ireland on March seventh, nineteen sixty six, that made news almost all over the world? That's question one. Question two. John Holland from Liscannor County Clare invented something. What did he invent? John Holland. Not the Holland Tunnel. Right? Not the Holland Tunnel, no. Good morning. Up of the morning to you. And the rest of the day to yourself. What's up? Oh, that's what I wanted to see. If you knew it's the balance of the day to you. Do you have an answer? No, I just wanted to tell you that. I didn't think you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Good morning. I got the answer to the second question. Which one? The John Holland question? Yes. What did he invent? Submarine. The submarine. Very good. Very would good. Would you like an Irish keychain? I would love one, yes. Okay, why don't All you right. hold on the Please line? Please hold. You know, I remember reading that. Um, I really do. I remember reading that not too long ago. Um, in the naval base in Washington, right on the river, they have a naval museum. And part of that uh, is John Holland submarine. Yeah. And just what it looked yeah. like and uh, how he put it together. Really courageous fellow, actually. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. 
is another word for it. And you have another question, Jim. Yeah, what happened in Ireland on March 7th, 1966 that made news almost all over the world? What happened in Ireland on March 7th, 1966? It was something that happened in Dublin. I don't in know. In Dublin. The Pope got married. I don't know. <laughs> Good morning. Jim. Yes. It's Manny. Manny, how are you? All right, how are you? Good, thanks. Listen, on that, uh, at the, uh, uh, the concert Saturday night, yeah. <laughs> the tickets are available at the box office. We'll be open at 6.30. The box office will be open at 6.30. There are tickets available. You still have some? All right. Good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know there's still tickets right now. But I, I was just uh, telling the woman earlier that not to count on the fact that they'll be available at the door just in case. Yeah, there's tickets available, and the box office will be open at 6.30. Okay. All right? Very good. Okay, Thanks for happy, calling. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You too, Manny. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay, Jim. Thanks. Okay, yep. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks for the information. Good morning. Good morning. March 7th, is that the day Nelson's statue was blown up? That's the day Lord Nelson's statue was blown up. Very good. Blew up Lord Nelson's statue. Uh, Nelson went up in old Ireland. And 21 years ago. Can you imagine that? Yes. 21 years ago. And we'll think about it during this Would break. Would you like an Irish keychain? Thank you. Hold All on right, the line. Hold on. Okay. If you're ready to buy a house, talk to the friendly staff at Crescent Credit Union. They have the best rates in years and plenty of mortgage money. They have a 30-year adjustable rate mortgage. And your rate stays the same for three years and never goes more than three points higher after that. They also have 15- and 30-year fixed-rate mortgages starting as low as 10%. Rates quarter to CCU's best rates available. Your actual percentage rate may vary. Call the mortgage department at 559-5400 for specific quotes or stop at any office of Crescent Credit Union. It's magic. Bring in a roll of film and watch it develop before your eyes. At Medicine Man Pharmacy, Joe Chris Hallmark Shop in Brockton, one hour photo, you can take advantage of their one hour photo processing. You can also get same day service on enlargements from a 4x6 to a 20x28 poster size. And you can buy film by Kodak, Fuji, Konica, Afka, and Ilford at wholesale prices. For your film and photo needs, visit Medicine Man Pharmacy, Route 106 West of Bridgewater, Joe Chris Hallmark Shop, Route 138 Southeastern, and Brockton One Hour Photo at 21 Pearl Street, Brockton. Welcome back to Newsline on WBET 1460. Uh, kind of an Irish day today, St. Patrick's Day. A happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you listening. Jim Larkin is here, and Jim has put together some Irish trivia questions, and we have some Irish music. I guess at the end of the program, before we sign off, we'll play Danny Boy. And once again, that'll be by the... Uh, the gentleman that uh, is it is it that the same record that same album? No, this is a different one. It's this a is different also album. Tony Kenny. Yeah. All right, it's yeah. it is Tony Kenny. Who's the other one? Yeah, it is Tony. You have two with Tony Kenny. Two Tony Kennys. Yes, they have well, it'll be yeah. Tony Kenny is singing this Saturday night. That's right. Yeah, this will be the first time Tony right, is we'll do that in a little while. We have any in here in outstanding questions right now. No, you got an answer to the last one, so maybe I'll uh, uh, I'll uh, put out another one. Who formed the Irish Transport and General Workers Union in 1909? We need two answers on that. Who formed the Irish Transport and General Workers Union in 1909? And I'll put on an easy one as well. How many counties are there in the Republic of Ireland? How many counties in the Republic of Ireland? Of Ireland. Right. 587 2400. Do you have an answer for us? I don't see the lights flashing. If you're not sure, take a guess. Better read them again, Jim. How many counties are there in the Republic of Ireland? Question uh, two. And question one was, who formed the Irish Transport and General Workers Union in 1909? Go ahead. WBET. Hi, 26. Yeah. 26 is right. That's the number of counties in the Republic of Ireland. How did you know? As I just saw a bumper this morning, 26 and 6 equals 1. Oh, oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Didn't yeah. you win a keychain already? I did not. I tried and I lost. Oh, well, we'll get one for you. Will you hold on? I will. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, that's Jim Larkin and, Wood and Dan Conley. Okay, well, that's close enough. Yeah, it was Jim Larkin and James Conley. Oh. James Conley, the fellow we played the song about a little while ago. <laughs> Would you like an Irish keychain? Love to have one. Oh, oh very Jim good. Jim Larkin causing trouble back then, too, huh? Yeah, he was a very good friend of my grandfather's. Really? Jim Larkin, yeah, yeah. He was head of the Transport Workers Union. Matter of fact, my aunt... Nine, huh? Yeah, my aunt has got letters from him to my grandfather, Jim Larkin, that I'd love to get my hands on. Sure. 
Sure. And, uh, ironically, Jim Larkin in Ireland died the same day as my grandfather. My grandfather was in the hospital with a heart problem, and he had received word that Jim Larkin had died that morning in Dublin, and my grandfather died that night. Oh. Both named Jim Larkin. Jim Larkin. Yeah. Well, thank you. Can you hold on? Sure. Hello. What's that? Uh, any, did, you, did you know, does that gentleman know how uh, to make Irish bread? I've been trying a recipe on one. I've been looking about some books, and I can't find a recipe to make Irish bread for today. Irish soda bread? Yes. Yeah, actually, there's, there's so many recipes for Irish bread, and everybody's got their own recipe. Uh, what would be a good place to call? There's a place on Crescent Street... Um, or she could go down, what's the name of the, the establishment there? We'll throw them a plug. The Irish Shop? The Irish Shop. It Fitzpatrick's Irish Imports. And um, Crescent on um, what street, Crescent? Uh, uh, yeah, 425 Crescent Street, Brockton. All right, thank you. Look at that. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep. Lines are open at 587-2400. We have about five minutes left. Do you have a couple of questions left? We might as well put them out and see what happens. Okay, here's a question maybe Irish Americans might be able to answer as well. In 1971, an Irishman wrote and recorded a song that reached number one on the U.S. charts, was nominated for Best Song of the Year in 1972, and sold more copies than any record ever written and recorded by an Irishman. I'll accept either the name of the song or the ma name of the man that recorded it. And I'll run that through that once more. 1971, an Irishman wrote and recorded a song. It reached number one on the U.S. charts. It was nominated for Best Song of the Year the following year. And it sold more copies than any record ever written and recorded by an Irishman. Give me either the man's name or the name of the song. Except either one. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to mouth it out without saying it over the, uh, the microphone. 587-2400. I suggest you get your, your answer in right away. 587-2400. Was there another, one more question? Matter of fact, WBET plays this song in the regular format. Okay. So, and I'll throw another quick one. In what county would you find Shannon Airport? What in county? What county? Find? Shannon, Shannon Airport. Airport. Good morning. Good morning. What is the most famous epic poem of Western Europe? The most famous what? Epic poem. Epic poem? Yes. Don't know. Holy cavalry. Okay, thanks right, for the thanks. question. Hello. Oh, is that Donovan? No, it wasn't that Donovan. Was my he, was, he was Scotch. That was my answer. Donovan was from Scotland. Okay. Thanks for trying, though. Why don't you read it again? Okay, 1971, an Irishman wrote and recorded a song that reached number one on the U.S. charts, was nominated for Best Song of the Year the next year, and sold more copies than any record ever written and recorded by an Irishman. Give me either the name of the song or the name of the artist. Good morning, WBT. Uh, this is Kay. Yeah. Uh, Shannon Airport is in County Clare. That's right. Shannon Airport's in County Clare. Would you like an Irish keychain? Yes, I would. Okay, hold All on right. the line. And the other question we have left. And the last question is the one about the Irishman that wrote and recorded a song. Was oh, my best goodness. Song of the, nominated for Best Song of the Year. Number one. Yes, it is Chats. played on WBT. Um, kind of a depressing song, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. yeah it's kind of, it's like, as soon as he leaves the party, it gets better, that type of thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. They went away. That's all right. 587-2400. We have about a minute left on this one. We'll have to give an answer and then uh, say thank you and we'll, we'll go out with Danny Boy. Hello, you have an answer. Is that Gilbert O'Sullivan? Gilbert That's O'Sullivan right. is right. The song was all Alone right. Again Glad Naturally. Very good. Alone Again Naturally. Yeah, that's the song, right. I couldn't think of the title, though. <laughs> okay, well, you had the man's name. Would you like an, uh, an Irish keychain? Certainly, why not? Okay, hold right. on the line. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, say thank you to you, Jim Larkin, for bringing the music, and, and uh, the keychains are yours, and for giving them out. Uh, we can make this a, a yearly thing. Perhaps next St. Patrick's Day we'll have the guitar in here, and you'll be singing live. Sure, and, why not? Uh, I'll even learn a couple of songs or something like that, or a couple of bars, or okay. what have you. But happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Uh, we'll have to just keep babbling for another half a second till Tony can just hit the button on the record. If you like some of the Irish music, tune in every Sunday, 5 to 7, Sounds five to of the Emmerdale. And this, e this uh, Saturday evening, there's stuff going on. Tony, can you leave us with Danny Boy? Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Jim. Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are
WBET weather forecast for the Metro South area. Cloudy skies coming up today. The light snow will be tapering off. It'll be very windy with a high temperature in the mid-30s. The outlook for tonight, partly cloudy skies, diminishing winds just a bit. An overnight low in the 20s. The outlook for tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sun. It will be breezy with a high temperature near 40 degrees. For WBET 1460, I'm staff meteorologist Nancy Aborn.